All right, so we are heading to Tioga Gardens, which is one of the nurseries in the Finger Lakes area. And we figured we'd go to some nurseries because we're moving up here and we'd like to see what all the nurseries have in stock and in store and what they specialize in so that we get a real good lay of the land. And I happened to find this one online and it's pretty cool because it's not only multi-decades old, but it also has this dome, this like greenhouse dome that looks similar, albeit very small, to the Amazon spheres or what we saw at uh, in Singapore. So we're gonna go check it out. So this is that huge dome pretty big. It's pretty insane for the year think? that it was actually built well, in. you think like 1975, that's crazy. Yeah. That's like 50 years ago. But yeah, if you want to see a tour on that, go to the YouTube channel, Plant One On Me, and you'll find all kinds of houseplants. So you saw this tree. This is really nice. Look at the structure of this. I like this a lot. Yeah, me too. Kind of looks like something got a... Whoa. It kind of looks like something out of Dr. Seuss. Wintergreen umbrella pine. That's neat. So you think this will stay always green, even through think, the winter? I don't think people, I don't think they would sell it if it wasn't like good right. for the area. A lot of these non-native plants come from like China and Japan and some other areas where it's a bit colder and so it could handle the climates. This one, this is a service berry, so this is Amelanchia. These are really great for birds and humans as well. The fruit is edible. It's very good, very tasty. They're called June berries as well. I mean, that obviously goes, it loses its leaves in the winter. We have some ginkgo. Oh, I think we have some of these on the property. This what is Japanese it? willow tree. This is the one that, I think we have ones that have like little curlier leaves. That looks cool, this was a variegated one. Yeah, this is a variegated one, but this, is, this looks like they're um, trained to just have a long stem and then right. have a little lollipop top. Pawpaw trees, this is what we're gonna grow in the forest for sure. What, it, what is it? This is kind of like the tropical fruit of the Northeast. Right and they grow in dappled shade or understories and they're native to here. And it kind of tastes, they all taste a little different. So you have to get the right kind of, you know, variety. But it's commonly described as like uh, custardy, like a custard kind of fruit that tastes like a banana and mango. Sometimes like a little papaya mixed in there. Yeah. So that'd be really nice. I think that you'd want to have a lot because they need to cross pollinate. That's great, and they have large ones here, so that's that's wonderful. See, a lot of these are trees from Japan. I think that, you know, for some areas where we have the weeping kind, like I love weeping dogwoods, and from that standpoint, they, they look really cool. I don't know. Some redwoods. This is a red bud, Circus canadensis. I like these Why is two. it called red bud? Because in the spring, it's one of the first to bloom, and I'll put out these reddish, purplish flowers huh. before oh. the actual heart-shaped leaves. That must be a photo. Right? Oh yeah, it's probably a photo. Whoop. <clears throat> and it's a, it's a leguminous tree, I meaning it's in the legume family, like peas and beans, but it doesn't fix nitrogen the same way that other leguminous trees or plants fix nitrogen. Right. Meaning it puts more nitrogen in the, it leaves nitrogen in the soil for other plants to do well. Yeah, it actually forms, when, it, when a plant fixes nitrogen, it's creating these little nodules on its roots for bacteria that take atmospheric nitrogen and they then are able to get it into a form that the plant could actually then take up. So it's actually the bacteria in collaboration with the roots of the tree that are fixing nitrogen. I'm burping because I have that apple. Here's this porcus. This is a, an oak. It's an oak. It's always good to have oaks in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A northern red oak. This is really beautiful. I, I'm a big believer because oaks are, you want to have oaks on your property for so many different reasons. But you want to have oaks on your property because 
it is the one tree that has the one of the most associations with other animals, bugs, birds, meaning it's a very useful tree in the ecosystem. I think it has like 500 other associations with, for it. So like animals, bugs, birds that are using the tree for food, shelter, etc. Hmm. This is a cherry it looks like. Now did it get much bigger yeah. than this? Oh, huge. These can get like 60 feet tall. How long will that take? Decades. Years probably. Decades. This is a cherry tree. I think these are really beautiful because oh, yeah, look, look at the stuff. bark. Usually they start off like this and then as they get older, they start to get different, very different bark. But at least in the winter, very beautiful winter interest of these trees because obviously you lose the leaves and then you have this reddish bark with these lenticels on, which is where the tree breathes. I think these are arbor vitae. Yeah. We have some of these on the property. I don't love it. Why not? I don't know. They kind of have a cool color. Not in like love with it. We have also a lot of these on the property, these acers, so these are Japanese maples. I think the guy before us really loved his Japanese maples, so we're gonna see a lot of those on the property. We have some that are a little bit more low-lying to the ground. We have others that are a little taller. These generally stay pretty small. This one's a little bit more of a weeping shape. Yeah. It's now, nice, I like how lacy they are. Now why are these purple and these are green? Different cultivar, okay. like a different cultivated variety that has been cultivated for the color. And this one's both. And you can see this one, this one, the new growth looks like it's really deep red and then it turns to a green. Ah, I see. Yeah, you can see that there. And then this one, is less lacy and has a more palmate shaped leaf. Oh, and then we're definitely gonna have a lot of this. This is cornice, this is the dogwood, and they have bracts that are often mistaken as flowers, so you can see what it looks like. So that white stuff is actually the bracts, that thing in the middle mm. is um, the inflorescence. And um, here's a great way that you could tell if it's Cornus. So I'm part of me because I'm actually gonna break this leaf. But you see this? This is the, called the string cheese test. You see those little string cheese right here that comes out? That fibrous stuff? Right. That's how you could tell that this is actually a cornice. I'm sorry. All right, now everyone knows. <laughs> Don't go to your garden center, everyone, and start <laughs> ripping up leaves. Yeah, you only need to do it once. But uh, this is great. I mean, we brought in a lot of um, non-native cornice, some that are edible to humans as well. Uh, but the berries usually prove to be like very good for birds. And so you could get dogwoods that are native and some that are not native. Like this is Cornus kusa, Japanese dogwood. This has an edible berry. Hmm. And the, where did the berries come from? Are these the berries? So the berries actually... This is the flower, right? Yeah, so you get a flower and then it turns into a berry. Oh, so okay. So as long as, like, that's where, you know, fruit comes from. If it's not flowering, then you're probably not going to get a fruit. Look at this one. This got a really nice yeah. color. Yeah, really pretty. I think this has probably been in sun a little bit too long, though, which is why it probably mm. has some reddening of the leaves. Look at this guy. Oh, so this is, these are little uh, leaf hoppers. Watch. Uh, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Uh, I'm not here. <laughs> what if I come right in the front? Oh, the, there's another one right here. Oh. Are those friendly pests? Well, they're not um, pests. These are, these are pests, actually. Oh, okay. But they're friendly. Now, look, they're not biting me. <laughs> oh, you're so friendly. But oh. are they friendly to the plant? Uh, they, you can have an infestation of leaf hoppers, but they're fine. They are a sucking insect, meaning okay. they could actually. So suck maybe the some of this damage is. Is this damage at all? Is that done by the. This looks a little bit more like it has, um, has had damage from too much sun. Okay, right. So. And then this one, 
Cornus stellar pink. Obviously, these are all cultivated varieties. That's how you could tell if it's a cultivated variety. Why? Because of the it it's in these quotation quotes. marks. Yeah. And um, and they're all been selected for certain qualities. Maybe it's a color of a flower. Maybe it's its stature. You could see that this one has more pink racks. I picked one for the um, garden in the back. Um, in the community garden in Brooklyn because it was weeping. Oh, here's a fruit. Look, oh. there's a there's an insect on it eating some of the flesh of it. The red one, right? Yeah, the red one in the back. Oh, yummy. Yummy, tasty. So Cornus cusis, cusa is an edible fruit. Yeah. Not all Cornus fruits are edible, though. So that one is something good, good to know. Oh, and then here, I, mean, I might put my mask on, my maskies. So these are the native, this is Cornus sericea. These are native dogwoods. And you can see they have these little fruits right here. And oftentimes like the ones that really attract wildlife are the native species, which is why I feel like you're saying, oh, I just have a backyard and <laughs> I have no wildlife. Well, you probably want to plant some more Put native species. Put some of those species. plants there. And yeah. they stay low to the ground, right? These look like they're lower to the ground. They look more like bushes versus ones that... Um, so the tree version exists? The, there's trees, there's bushes, there's ones that are called bunchberry that grow in the forest. Hmm. I definitely want to plant. Uh, Cornus canadense. I think it's Cornus canadensis. It's a bunchberry, very beautiful, very similar bracts. Very low to the ground, could spread throughout the forest. Native, very cool. All cornice actually grow in more like dappled shade. Look at these berries. Let's see what it is. What, where, oh no, this is a viburnum. So viburnums are, a lot of them are native. Sometimes we've brought them in. Uh, I like viburnums. I got one that has like a more spreading habit. So viburnums get these big white flowers. Here, this is a great photo. The different ones look like. This one probably has a different photo. This one's another one. Popcorn double filed viburnum. So viburnums, great for species, native. Now this looks like a winter or a witch hazel. I don't know which one this is. No, this is also a viburnum. Viburnums are tricking me. This one's nice, it has a really thick leaf. These m look more like laurels or rhododendrons. Yeah, this is a rhododendron. So these are great on the edges of woodlands. I think they need a really acidic soil. Could also be very nice, they get really beautiful flowers. Mm. Hydrangeas, people love hydrangeas. Depending on if your soil is alkaline or acidic, it could either go more blue or red in color oftentimes. Wow, so the same plant same produces plant different results. If you have, an, depending on the pH of your soil. Should we go check out some of the other flowers? Yeah. And then the landscape in the back? Echinacea, these are purple coneflowers, native really great meadow plant and insects love them even though it looks like these insects are more on the sedum right now <laughs> i always like usually buy the plant that i see the most honeybees on in the garden center hmm. because i'm like okay if the honeybees really are j jiving with this let nature pick it for you yeah let nature pick it for you it's really a good idea i guess it also depends if they're in bloom or not yeah mums not really my bag but very popular during the fall. Butterfly bush. Now, Casey was commenting that butterfly bush is a really good attractant for pollinators, but it's a non-native plant. So there's been kind of a little bit of backlash too about butterfly bush. I personally would rather plant more native perennials, but butterfly bush is really beautiful. They have some grasses here. Nice. 
which I love grasses. And when I'm thinking about doing the meadow, I'm thinking about what grasses would be really nice. This is switchgrass. I mean, look at the seed heads of this. Cultivar has like red leaves and has these red seed heads, really gorgeous. This is also very good for planting if you have like a swale, like a bioswale, and it's there to collect water, runoff water. Switchgrass is great for that. It kind of grows in clumps, but when the wind blows and you just, just hear and see the grasses, and then even having the grasses throughout fall and winter, it just provides this like all around seasonal interest. And plus, if you leave the grasses up throughout the fall, then it'll serve as habitat for insects. Um, insects to overwinter in like bumblebees, for instance. So I really, I really like grasses and I wanna, I wanna learn a little bit more about them. They don't have like a wide selection here, but they have some good ones. Now, Casey said what they're known for is like the annual plants, but obviously all their annuals are out because it's not really a good season. You usually get annual plants right in the beginning of the year. So that's more of what they're known for. So what we're seeing here is like more kind of perennial stuff, stuff that you could plant in the fall. These are a lot of um, sedums and like if you have a rock garden, these would be perfect for a rock garden. And I don't know, I definitely wanna start like a rock garden in our area because it just provides another layer of interest. And there are actually a lot of succulents that are cold hardy, hmm. which is kind of cool. I'd like to explore that. Here's some more sedums. So the soil for rocks, a rock garden is just very airy. Lots of little stones. Yeah, so you could just have you could just have like you don't have to have much of a layer of soil at all for them to actually grow. These are rose bushes. I, whenever I think I don't really love rose bushes, but whenever I think of rose bushes, I think that of the, how the chickens love to eat the leaves. So I'm imagining the leaves have some really good nutrients in them. What's next? Monarda. So this is a one of my favorites, bee balm. It's a type of mint though, so it spreads. This Does one it says, smell like mint too? This one should smell like mint because Ooh. they like to make bergamot oh my tea. Oh it smells so good. Yeah, so this makes, you'd want to plant this like more in a container or someplace where it is contained because it will spread like a mint because it, it grows these like little rhizomes, these underground stems and it kind of spreads like that. But look at the flowers. They're really beautiful and they attract hummingbirds, they attract butterflies. Hmm. And you could see the different cultivars. Look at this one, this is my favorite. The really dark red ones. The one thing that they are susceptible to is this powdery mildew though. So you gotta make sure that they don't get too much wet feet. And then this when do is- the flower come, When do the flowers come up? Uh, usually in the summer months. So typically like June, July, August. Now this is, this is strong. I see this planted everywhere. This is Russian sage. Oh, wow. This will flower. We're filming this right now in late August. This will flower throughout September. So it's a really late flower. This one looks like Baptisia. Is this what it, yeah, Baptisia. So this is a type of like indigo. It is a, it is a nitrogen fixing plant, I believe. So that's great. And then salvia, salvia usually flowers a little bit sooner in the year. So like mm, June, July, it's, it's just at the tail end of flowering. These are really popular for uh, insects as well. Lavender, another great smelling plant. Mm, my God. Wow. It's intense. Lupines. Don't look so good right now. They get seed heads on it. I do like the leaves though, and they get these really beautiful flowers, and they are nitrogen fixers. So there's some really good different varieties of lupines. Yeah, it's got a really cool flower. Yeah, very nice. They get nice, cool seed heads too. Or it's got a really cool leaf. These are um, yarrows, Achilles. Achilles. Yeah, Achilles these are very are common. Achilles are really common. Look at this spider. Whoa. I actually have one of these in my apartment. 
creating a web. He's cute. I don't know if this guy creates a web, though. Well. I think he does, because he has a stripe down the middle of his back, like this. And they run away pretty quickly, too, I think. Oh, maybe not. Mm. This one's got more this guts. One, this one seems like the, they hunt, the ones that hunt on the ground. Oh. This is right here. It's not a flower. Asclepius tuberosa. It's um, butterfly weed. Another great meadow plant. It gets a nice orange flower. And it's, uh, it's native. It's one of the milkweeds. So if I break it off, it should have a clear latex. Oh, you can barely see it. Um, and this is Asclepius incarnata. Yeah, this one has a better view of the latex. See, a little white latex. It's really sticky. Well, it's not that bad for latex here. And then these get... Um, you could see it on the stem oh, here. Oh, yeah, really here well. you go. That's better. All the pressure is building up right there now. So that's like the popular monarch plant because the monarchs need that. Butterfly. Some more cone flowers. These are obviously all cultivars. The native echinacea is a little bit more of like a dusty purple color, but they've really cultivated a lot of varieties of these to have all different colors. So they have hardy mums and they actually grow these here. I don't love them. <laughs> I think they're just too like... Yeah, they're a bit more geometric. Yeah. You're not so geometric. I like geometric. I just, I do like things a little shaggier. Ooh. A little shaggier. So they, they have this area back there that's planted up. Do you think there was anything interesting in here? That's more like more of the I same. I think this is their shade house, and they're probably growing shade tolerant varieties here. Yeah. So this is employee only, so this has a shade house. If you could see they have hostas, so these are all plants that could grow under shade. Over here, they have hookeras. So again, very shade tolerant plants. Although hookeras, if it has a darker red, you probably want to grow that in more dappled light versus something that is lighter colored, which is better for, and then they have ferns. Ferns are cool. I think the, we already have ferns growing into the, in, in the forest yeah, on our property, right? We, ha we have ferns and we have Solomon seals. And you could see that Is that these, the same kind? These say they're native plants. We have so many different kinds of ferns. We have like sensitive okay. fern, we have Christmas fern. We might have some of these. This is cinnamon fern, this color. What? That looks cool. And then Solomon seal, we have them as well, but not the variegated versions. The variegated versions is like a cultivated variety, but all native. Very nice. Yeah, let's go check out the back area because what I think is nice is that we get some inspiration on how other people are planting and landscaping their land. All right, because what's back there? That's, I guess, where they hold weddings and host weddings. Oh, so it's like a little demo garden. Yeah, a demo garden with some water. Looks like the water's on, the little fountain. I mean, it may not be our tastes, but... So here's some weeping ones, see? This is a weeping cherry. What kind? Let's see. Snow fountain weeping cherry. Prunus snow fountains. I do like the weeping kind. I used to, at Cornell, I used to, um, they have one of the weeping birch trees, and it's really big now. And I used to go under it, because you could actually physically walk under it and sit under it and have like a tea party <laughs> under it. And I used to go there to like read my books and stuff. It was like your own private room under this right. weeping tree, so. That's cool. I have a soft spot in my place for like weeping trees. It's a cool area, like you could have like trails back there and stuff. So they have some acers. This is all maple These right here. huge trees, right? Yeah. They have spruce and pine. Acer. Oh my God, look at this place. It's really decked out with flowers. It's so much color for it. <laughs> so you this not is expect a, that to be back here. I know. This is what they're known for, though, is they're like colorful annual flowering plants. Should we go in? Yeah, sure. 
Where do you start? Look at the grasses. So that's like what a lot of people do is they have this fountain of grass. That's a really nice yeah. grass right there. Or the canna, these are cannas that they have like, it's a really big statement piece and then they just plant around it. It's almost like, it's like a barrage of color. See, this is, I like this kind of grass a little bit more. The stuff that has like this interesting tops. Feel how nice that is. Yeah, it's got a nice texture too. Yeah. And it creates very interesting color patterns. Yeah. Touch it. It's really nice. It's like a cat. <laughs> Step in its tail. Um, it smells kind of strange in here. And I think it might just be all the flowers that are it's all the flowers. that are mixing. That just it's like if you throw all perfumes yeah. in one bin. And the smell of that comes from I that. I kind of want to go over the Japanese. Oh yeah, this is really cool. Uh, bridge. I definitely see that tea house on the property and like a little homage to certain Japanese gardens, reflecting pools, things like that. This is very much like that tea, tea house. So the story behind these bridges, you know, everything in a Japanese garden like means something. And these are purposely built to be harder to walk up as if you're like walking through life in a very challenging manner. Uh, so it's almost like uncomfortable to do it. Although it gives my calves a good workout. <laughs> Whirligig beetles. That's so what cool. What are those? The whirligig beetles. There's a what bunch over there too. So they actually swim on the surface of the water. They could actually go um, dive into the water too. But they have a little bubble on their butt. And that's how they're able to like manage being on the surface of the water. They're an aquatic insect, as you could tell. They're so cool. If you ever get them outside, and I can't catch them because they're too far in, but they have cute little eyes and like a little, I don't know, leaf-shaped body. This is Plectranthus. It's like type of coleus. Lots of different cultivars. They'll lose their coloration if they're not like in the sun, if they have a specific coloration. Really good bedding plant. I usually try to cut them in the fall and then you could stick them in some water in your, like, and do water propagation and they will exist throughout the winter in the home. Oh, these are Japanese beetles. They're very pretty, but they are terrible pests on plants. What do they do to the plant? Well, they're wow, pumping they're on lots. them now. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> they, breed like, they breed like crazy. Yeah, I used to find them on like gooseberries and grapes in my, my where I grew up. And it was terrible because my they used to infest so much. My brother and his friend used to grab them and they'd put them in like alcohol and like drown them. It was really sad. But I guess that's probably better than spraying pesticides on your plants. And what do they do to just eat up all the leaves? They or? eat the leaves, yeah. They'll eat the leaves or the flowers or you know, and they'll leave right. these big gaping holes. They're very beautiful though, like look at the coloration. Look at, that's, whenever you come up near them, they stick their legs up. <laughs> like, no. No. <laughs> Stay away. Stay away. I'm giving you the finger. Yeah, they are. But what if I just pet you like this? <laughs> yeah, see? Oh yeah, you're calming down. See, I'm just petting you. <laughs> yeah, nice. He's like, okay, I'm pretty calm now. Oh, that's great. That's Japanese great. garden. I feel with the Japanese beetles. <laughs> getting a massage. This getting is a the Japanese stuff massage. that they're known for. This is the annual plants. It's not my taste, really. Ah, that's cool. You see, see these all around the towns around here. Right, like in like Ithaca and stuff like that. 
But these, you get these once and then they flower and then they're done for, And then for, you have right? to get them next year, yeah. Yeah. But they, it seems like they flower for a pretty long time. That's true. Like some of these annual plants, they actually flower for pretty much the whole season. Nice. Yeah. Anything interesting over here? Ooh, this is nice. This pine. Yeah, I like, see this is like some of the weeping kinds that like you could create these, they're almost architectural, right? And yeah. then they become like a centerpiece in the garden. And then they have some annuals and they have some of these bigger sedums growing up, these ones that are yet, are about to flower. And you know, once these stop flowering, this will probably start to flower. So it's nice to like time the flowering, right? And then they have this interesting acer over here, which is the Japanese maple. Yeah. And this is, seems like to be a, like a kind of smaller version, but with like a reddish color leaf to kind of offset with the green. So, I, you know, there's, you could play with it. It's like a patchwork quilt. You know? Right, so you're saying when you build something like this, figure out when each plant is in bloom and then make sure that there's always something here that's blooming or... Yeah, and also, like, what kind of flower does it have? Like, it would be weird if it, it all has the same flower. You know, like, the Dutch do that with all the tulips. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it looks very monotonous. But I think it looks kind of interesting when you have, like, maybe a lacy flower and one that has... Um, you know, a different kind of top, like the sedum. And then you have ones with like big flowers, like the canna lilies, you know, and, and kind of working it through that way as well, because then that kind of like gives a little bit more interest as opposed to like just this monotonous looking garden. Yeah. Leaves too, like this is a nice lacy leaf, but then, you know, it'd be kind of cool if you have like bigger leaves then too. I think it's like endless. I, there's no right or wrong way, but it's just like your preference, I guess. Here's another Acer. This one looks like a red maple. Acer rubra. Seems and see like how these, they have... These plants will do well in the shade. Yeah, and they have like uh, hostas. And this looks like a type of impatience. And then some begonias. Those are like the bedding begonias that do well in yeah. the shade. Wow, these are so pink that my camera can't even capture the color. It just <laughs> flattens it out. Yeah, the pink and reds like never translate on the camera. I think there was some article at some point that said the pink wasn't a color or something. Well, or it's like a very special color. Well, well you tell all the four-year-old girls that because they love the color pink. Yeah. <laughs> I never like pink, I like purple. Well, that's it. I think we know what they have here. Well, that's cool. And I yeah. think like, uh, I think this is kind of cool because I, I don't know much about these plants. I know a lot more about camera gear, <laughs> but Which it's, we need to. it's cool to learn like and to see what does well. You're um, really good. Today, you plants. said something along the lines of, you're like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And you said a plant name and you knew what plant it was. So <laughs> yeah, maybe you're, you're getting that's a good, good guess. Yeah, no, it was great. Yeah. You're learning. So yeah. All right. Hopefully I can ask some of the dumber questions and then there's no we'll, dumb questions. We'll all like Simple figure out questions. how to learn. Yeah. And then uh, we'll check out some of the other nurseries around here too, because it'll be nice to see what we have yeah. in the area. And then once we are ready to start planting, we'll know exactly where to go. Sounds good.